Hi, Riverway Otters. This is Mrs. Powell, the reading teacher at Riverway. And I'm so excited to be doing the Wednesday read aloud with you guys. So it's so good to see all those otters ready to listen on a Wednesday. So I know our word of the month is self-management. So I was trying to choose a read aloud book that would really tie into our self-management goals at Riverway. So um, I was reading these top boxes about impulse control, about being in charge of your emotions and my actions, and I can stop, breathe, and reset. I think that's such an important thing for us to learn how to do throughout our whole lives, not just when we're at Riverway. And then I also was looking at this one when I was choosing a book, Managing Emotions. So it says I can identify my emotions and I know at least one way to calm myself down. And breathing and resetting is just such a great way to calm yourself down. So I was thinking about that and I had a book that was called Bear Snores On. And I decided this one was a great book for self-management and you're gonna find out why when we read it. The other reason I chose this book is because it was written by Karma Wilson. So she's the author. And I got to meet Karma Wilson at a school that I used to teach at. She came and did an assembly for our students. So I actually bought this book from her when she came to our school. So it makes it an extra special book to me. So written by Karma Wilson, illustrated by Jane Chapman, Bear Snores On. Here we go. Ooh, what a nice introductory page. Makes me want to read it. I see a little bear's den there. I bet bear lives in there. Bear Snores On by Karma Wilson. In a cave in the woods, in his deep, dark lair, through the long, cold winter, sleeps a great brown bear. So if you look carefully, you can see the brown bear in that lair, which is another word for a den, and there he is sleeping, probably hibernating because it's winter time. I can tell from the picture that illustration shows me snow and bare trees, so I know he's hibernating. Puddled in a heap with his eyes shut tight, he sleeps through the day, he sleeps through the night. The cold winds howl and the night sounds growl but the bear snores on. So he's all by himself in this dark lair. An itty bitty mouse, pitter pat, tiptoe, creep crawls in the cave from the fluffy cold snow. Oh, I bet that mouse is coming inside to get warm because that den looks like a warm place to be in that cold weather. Mouse squeaks. Too damp, too dank, too dark. So he lights wee twigs with a small hot spark. Oh, wow. So he's making a fire inside Bear's den while Bear's sleeping. What a surprise. I wonder if that's going to wake Bear up. What do you guys think? That would wake me up if someone lit a fire in my den. The coals pit pop and the wind doesn't stop. But the bear snores on. Wow, what a surprise. Even though there's a fire right near him, the bear continues to snore. So he's deep in hibernation, sleeping soundly through the winter. Two glowing eyes sneak peek in the den. Mouse cries, who's there? And a hare pops in. So a hare is another word for a rabbit. I can tell from the illustration, that's a big rabbit. Oh, mouse says hare, long time no see. So they pop white corn and they brew black tea. Mouse sips, we slurps, hare burps, big burps, but the bear snores on. still sleeping. I want to keep reading. I'm thinking he's going to wake up one of these moments. A badger scuttles by, sniff snuffs at the air. I smell yummy yums. Perhaps we can share. 
I've brought honey nuts, Baz Badger says with a grin. Let's divvy them up, cozy down, and dig in. Hey, this is turning into a party, don't you think? How fun. And they nibble and they munch with a chew, chomp, crunch. But the bear snores on. Oh, my goodness. They're being loud with their eating. These words are coming down to German in all capitals. So I know these are loud food eating words, aren't they? Chew, chomp, crunch. But it still has a baby. I wonder how he's going to feel when he does wake up. I want to keep reading. A gopher and a mole tunnel up through the floor. Then a wren and a raven flutter in through the door. Wow, these illustrations really help me understand these animals that maybe I've never seen before. A gopher and a mole and a wren and a raven. Oh, that looks a lot like a crow. I think that's the same animal. Mole mutters, what a night, what a storm, twitters Wren, and everybody clutters in the great bear's den. Ooh, that nice cozy fire and all these friends around enjoying some yummy treats. What a fun party. They tweet and they titter, they chat and they chitter, but the bear snores on. He must have been really tired. In a cave in the woods, a slumbering bear sleeps through the party in his very own lair. So if you see this picture, there's the bear in the background and all these friends dancing and having a fun time. Hair stokes the fire, mouse seasons stew. Then a small pepper fleck makes the bear... Ooh, look at this. This is an ellipse. So that means I need to turn the page to find out the rest of the sentence. So I'm thinking right now as a reader, ooh, pepper, that always makes my nose itch. And so I'm thinking maybe it's going to make the bear sneeze. Could that be? Let's find out. It makes the bear a chew. I was right. He blows and he sneezes and the whole crowd freezes. Ooh, I wonder how they're feeling. I can kind of tell from their picture. They are probably feeling scared and surprised that the pepper woke the bear up. Look at their faces. Do they look scared and surprised? Ears are back. Eyes are big. They look really nervous. And the bear wakes up. Bear gnarls and he snarls. Bear roars and he rumbles. Bear jumps and he stomps. Bear growls and he grumbles. Oh, wow. Talk about emotions going on. He looks angry, doesn't he? I see his eyebrows. I see his mouth. I know he's going to try to manage those emotions because right now he's angry. Do you ever feel kind of irritated when you get woken up and you're really asleep? I can kind of understand how he's feeling, but I'm hoping that he doesn't get mad at his friends. So I think he already knows these animals. Let's find out if he has self-management. You've snuck in my lair and you've had all the fun, but me, I was sleeping and I have had none. And he whimpers and he moans, he wails and he groans. Oh, now he's not angry anymore. His emotions have changed. Now he's feeling really sad and left out because they were partying without him. And the bear blubbers on. Oh, I can tell blubbering means crying because I see tears. Look at the tears coming out of bear. Poor bear. Now I feel sorry for him. I wonder if he's going to be able to pull it together. I wonder if he's going to have self-management and manage those emotions. Mouse squeaks. Don't fret. Don't fuss. Look. See, we can pop more corn. We can brew more tea. Wow, what a good friend. And look at Bear. Wow, did he pull it together? He was really, first he was angry. Then he was sad and felt left out. And now, because he has a good friend who's going to include him, he is managing his emotions. He feels happy. See that little smile? Let's see if he continues. 
his good choices. Bear gulps, bear gobbles, he sighs with delight. Then he spins tall tales to the blustery night when the sun peeks up on a crisp, clear dawn. Bear can't sleep, but his friends snore on. Oh, how funny! So now his friends, after partying all night, look at, they're all asleep because they're exhausted. So, wow. Do you see why I chose this book for self-management? Ben really got it together, didn't he? He had all those emotions. He was angry. Then he was sad and just left out. And then he pulled it together and he ended up telling tall tales. That means telling stories and enjoying his friends and having a great time. So that's why I picked this book. I think this book is such a great example of self-management. Bear really made some choices. He could have been really angry and kicked all his friends out of his den so he could go back to sleep to continue hibernating, but he made a choice to pull it together and to decide to have a great time and enjoy his friends and enjoy the party that they had in his den. So I just think this is a great example. I really appreciate you guys listening to me. And I know you guys have this self-management poster in your classrooms. So, so take a look at it. And these were the ones I was focusing on in my lesson today, but it's all really imp important. This learning self-management is such a great skill and it's something that's gonna serve you your whole life and just make you a better person. So thank you for listening to me today. And again, Riverway Otters, you guys are the best. Keep up the great work. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.